In this video, we will take a look at warrants and employee stock options. We will talk about their practical use and also we will take a look at how they are valued in practice. We will structure our discussion about warrants and employee stock options by working out this very simple sold example. A company has a stock price which is currently $40 and has 10 million shares that are currently outstanding. The company is considering giving its employees 4 million at the money 3 year stock options. Let's begin with the first question and that is about practical uses of issuing warrants and employee stock options. Please note that when we talk about warrants, employee stock options and even convertible bonds, essentially we are talking about options which are issued by the firm itself on its own stock. When I talk about warrants, I essentially talk about call options which are commonly issued as a sweetener for bond issues. Essentially, the company is handing out these warrants to its bond investors and allowing these investors to participate in the upside or let's say the success of the firm. If the stock price of the firm were to indeed go up, these bond investors can use these warrants, I mean exercise these warrants and purchase the stock of the firm at a rather attractive price, which is the strike price of these warrants. When it comes to employee stock options, they can be issued, for example, to increase the motivation of the firm's employees, allow the firm's employees to participate in the equity ownership of the firm and in the long term align the interests of these employees with the interests of the firm's shareholders. Also, employee stock options can be issued with this intent of altering the compensation structure of the firm and in some sense reduce the fixed portion of the compensation. Okay, moving on to the second question. This is about the difference between warrants slash employee stock options and European call options. Let's talk about the similarities first. Well, warrants and employee stock options, they are similar to plain vanilla European call options because both these types of instruments, they confer the same rights to the holder of these instruments. Okay, and essentially we are talking about the rights to purchase the stock of the firm at a pre-agreed strike price and at a pre-agreed time if we are talking about a European version of these options. Also, please note that if you are, let's say, a holder of a warrant or let's say an employee stock option, unless we are talking about a lock-in period, you can exit out of this ownership of this instrument via an existing secondary market. Okay, so an exit route is indeed available. Warrants and employee stock options, they also trade in the market. Okay, then let's talk about differences. The most important difference, something which we've already mentioned, is that warrants and employee stock options, they are issued by the firm itself on its own stock. On the other hand, European call options, they are issued by, let's say, private investors or, let's say, private firms, okay? The number of options which are issued when it comes to warrants and employee stock options is fixed. This number is kind of predetermined. On the other hand, the number of plain vanilla European call options outstanding at any given point in time is variable and open interest in these options is kind of unlimited or unbounded. Okay, then a very important difference is about dilution impact. 
प्लीज नोट दैट वॉरेंट्स एंड इम्प्लॉय स्टॉक ऑप्शन दे हैव अ डायल्यूटिव इम्पैक्ट वेन इट कम्स टू द शेयर होल्डर्स इक्विटी द एक्सरसाइज ऑफ वॉरेंट्स एंड इम्प्लॉय स्टॉक ऑप्शन वेन इट हैपन्स द फर्म विच इज द इश्यूअर ऑफ दीज इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हैज टू क्रिएट न्यू स्टॉक विच विल बी डिलीवर्ड to the holders of these instruments okay so the exercise of warrants and employee stock options it affects the cash flows of the firm it affects the capital formation of the firm and it affects the number of stocks which are outstanding at any given point in time okay and therefore because of these reasons warrants and employee stock options they have a dilutive impact okay on the other hand please note that employee on the other hand please note that european call options they do not have any dilutive impact when european call options are exercised the short party either is already holding the stock which needs to be delivered this is when we are talking about a covered position or for that matter the short party can always go to the market and procure the right number of stocks which have to be delivered to the long party this is when we are talking about let's say a naked position okay in both these cases when an exercise happens theoretically speaking the firm whose stock we are talking about is kind of not impacted by the exercise okay then another important difference between warrants slash employee stock options and plain vanilla european calls is to do with their tenor or expiration warrants they tend to be long dated european calls they tend to be short dated okay let's move on to part c of this question and this is about valuing a simple employee stock option in this question we are given that the number of existing shareholders of this firm is 10 million the number of warrants which the firm plans to issue is 4 million the expiration of these warrants is given to be 3 years okay now please note that if i were to try and incorporate the dilutive impact of these employee stock options then this is the way i'll be doing it let's say the market is forecasting the price of this particular company's stock as of this future time capital t to be st and this is in this scenario in which there are no warrants if i were to now include warrants in the picture then the st it changes to a price which let us denote by st star how do you work this st star out essentially this st star is the price that would prevail if and when the warrants that we are talking about get exercised okay without these warrants i know that the total equity of this firm is n times st if these m warrants were to be exercised the total inflow of new capital is m the number of warrants that times k the strike price the total equity capital of the firm therefore becomes n times st plus m times k dividing this total by the total number of shares which is now n plus m gives me my st star if i were to go and let's say use the risk neutral valuation technique to work out the fair premium of one employee stock option then this is what it will look like the fair premium of the employee stock option should be equal to the discounted value of the expected payoff of this employee stock option worked out in the risk neutral world please note that the payoff should be worked out not using st but rather using st star if i were to substitute for this st star you know using this formula into this payoff 
and do some simple algebra, what I'll observe is that the fair premium of my employee stock option comes out to be n over n plus m, which I can think of to be a dilutive factor or a dilution factor, that times the premium of a plain vanilla European call option, let's say worked out using my chosen model, let's say which is Black-Scholes and this European call option has the same strike and maturity as my employee stock option. Okay, so valuing this employee stock option turns out to be a two-step process. I work out the premium of a European call option with the same strike and maturity, let's say using the Black-Scholes formula and I multiply that premium by a dilution factor, n over n plus m. Very quickly, substitute the values given in the question and you will observe that the value of one employee stock option comes out to $7.286. Since the firm is planning to issue 4 million of these, the total cost to the firm would come out to be 29.14 million. Okay, let's move on to part D of this question. We've already worked out the total cost to the company to be 29.14 million. Part D of this question says that if the market perceives no benefits from these stock options, how much will the stock price adjust by? Essentially, to work out this part of this question, we can think of these employee stock options which are worth this much to be, let's say, a prize which is being handed over to the employees, but the market is not perceiving any benefit of handing over this prize. Okay, so a prize worth 29.14 million is being handed out. And it is the existing shareholders who kind of foot the bill for this total price. Okay, and therefore the decrease in the stock price would turn out to be the total amount, which is 29.14 million, that divided by the existing number of shares, and that is 10 million. Okay, so on a per share basis, it turns out to be 2.914 and therefore the stock price of the firm decreases to 40 minus 2.914 and that is 37.086. Before I stop this video, let me mention something which is both interesting as well as important. All these calculations that we have done, they have been done at a stage wherein the company is still considering this employee stock option issue. If the company, let's say, were to surprise the market and go ahead and issue these employee stock options, the price of the stock will adjust downwards and it will become 37.086. From this point onwards, if the market is efficient, the market will accommodate and at all points in time take into account the dilution impact of a potential exercise of these currently outstanding warrants or employee stock options. Therefore, if the market is efficient and has full knowledge of these outstanding derivatives or options on the firm's stock, from this point onwards, you do not have to multiply the fair premium which comes from the Black-Scholes formula by the dilution factor. Okay, so from this point onwards, you can value these warrants or employee stock options as regular options. Okay, so this video was about understanding warrants and employee stock options, their practical uses and also taking a look at how they are valued in practice. Okay.